Hey everyone, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle. And as you can see, my hair has now grown long enough to actually tie a man bun. So I'm still debating whether like I like this look or I'm just gonna keep my hair down. But for this video, you get to see my hair in a man bun. Anyway, um, <laughs> today I thought I would talk about the UK chess scene and particularly how you transition from a chess player that plays a lot online to a chess player that plays in live tournaments, uh, in person. Imagine all the people. And um, yeah, basically someone asked me um, on live chess uh, about this and um, hopefully this video will help that person and others in a similar scenario. So, you might think, how do you even come to this conclusion that, you know, you want to start getting into chess more seriously? And to be honest, I think um, a lot of it is can be down to like the Queen's Gambit. Like lots of people have watched it and really um, liked the taste of playing in tournaments and being able to travel the world and like they're kind of like intrigued by this. So they're interested in like maybe, you know, giving it a shot themselves. So uh, really, um, when you transition from playing online chess to uh, real life chess, it can be a bit daunting because uh, you don't know where to start. Uh, there are all kinds of federations and uh, different types of tournaments, leagues, and you know, it can be a bit overwhelming. So hopefully I can break this down for you. Uh, so I'm going to specifically talk about the UK um, chess scene and how you can get involved with that. I don't know too much about other countries, so uh, maybe Dylan uh, can chip in on that in another video sometime. But yeah, uh, firstly, to explain the title, uh, the, word, the term OTB stands for over the board. And over the board just is a way of saying you're playing in real person, not just online. Firstly, I thought I'd start with talking about the types of federations you would need to sign up to if you wanted to start playing in real tournaments. And the two tournaments, uh, the two federations um, in mind, you'd have to keep in mind, is first the ECF and secondly FIDE. And ECF stands for the English Chess Federation. They have their own national rating system and uh, a lot of tournaments in the UK and leagues will be ECF rated as in when you play games, uh, for those that don't know, it works very similarly to an online rating, whereas, but in, the difference is when you play games, um, you don't get a new rating immediately. Like online, like you win a game, you get plus eight. When you lose a game, you get minus eight. But with real ratings, they get updated monthly or with uh, the English Chess Federation in the past, they would get updated every six months. So they would collate all of the pluses and minuses over those six months and uh, you'd be left with your new improved grade or worse grade. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the general gist. I believe they have different tiers of membership as well. You have bronze, silver and gold membership. And they basically, um, gold will give you more access to a wider variety of types of tournaments and leagues. But to be honest, to just get started, all you need is a bronze membership which will last you a whole year and that will give you access to many of the types of tournaments I'm going to talk to you about now. Really you have leagues and you have congresses. So leagues are an ongoing um, tournament I guess that lasts a whole season which might be something like nine months or maybe the whole year and you'll represent a team uh, and you'll play in that team and uh, fight other teams maybe in your local area um, to play for whatever competition you're playing for. So for me personally, I played in a league called the Thanet League and within that Thanet League we had the Miller Cup which was seven players a team and you were playing uh, and any rated player could play. So that was like the strongest um, league. Uh, you also had um, different leagues to suit different like rating categories. So you had like the Hargreaves Shield, which was under ECF 145, which is the equivalent to 18, under 1800. 
maybe. And then you also had like, uh, what was the, the Walker Shield or something, which was um, under 110 ETF, which was equivalent to maybe under 1400. Uh, I believe there are like leagues in uh, most counties across the UK. Uh, so definitely look into that. And honestly, really the leagues on its own can already give you such a great taste into real chess. You don't even uh, need the tournament necessarily at the start. And um, I want to highlight one player in particular, and that is Grandmaster Jonathan Hawkins. Uh, he's an English Grandmaster, and I believe after his degree, he just like, um, I don't know what subject he was doing, but he basically didn't pursue the career, and instead just focused on chess. And he played in the Durham local league and that's when his chess really took off because he was playing against strong players like people in these leagues aren't um, amateurs at all and uh, he just started crushing everyone and his uh, national rating went really high and he gained some traction from that and yeah from there he just kept growing as a player so uh, really inspirational apart from leagues you can definitely uh, get into tournaments as well and uh, tournaments are often congresses in the UK, that's what they call them. And again, you have different categories. You have the open, which anyone can enter. You have the major, which is under a certain level, like under 2000. Um, then you have like the intermediate section and then the minor section. So you have all of these sections and uh, it's very similar. If you've seen the Queen's Gambit, it's very similar to the, uh, what was it? Like the Kentucky State Championship where Beth like, strolls in and enters the open and wins, which would never happen in real life. Uh, uh, I actually have a friend um, who, when he played his first ever tournament, in very Beth Harmon style, he entered an open tournament and he didn't have a starting rating and he decided he was going to play in the open and he got absolutely trashed. He scored like 0.5 out of 6, so he definitely should have gone in the minor for his first time, but okay, if you're ambitious and you don't know any better then maybe you'd want to try that but yeah no I think just start with the minor see how you do make it your challenge to like win the minor and then step it up from that and maybe you'll do so well in your leagues and your rating will go up but you can no longer enter the minor and that's normally a good indication that okay you should play in the next level and then the next level and you improve that's quite a lot about the ECF I've talked about um, I'll now mention FIDE. Now what I would say is if you're like a beginner in the UK, I would stay away from FIDE rated tournaments to begin with because the way FIDE works is if you play in a tournament and you play enough games, you'll be given a FIDE rating. And what FIDE is, um, I don't know, it's like Federation Internationale, it's like some French phrase which I don't know. It's basically the international governing body of chess and the way the FIDE uh, ratings work is that if you play in a FIDE rated tournament you'll get a FIDE rating and this is great but also if you are a beginner and you play in a FIDE tournament you might get let's say a rating of 1200 let's say. Imagine from there like five years later um, you've worked on your chest, you've got a lot better and you play in another FIDE tournament. Your starting rating is 1200 and it's going to take absolutely ages to gain rating points to get to maybe a level you're aiming for. Let's say you're aiming to get to 2000. To have to get to 2000 starting from 1200 is so much harder than if you just avoided the FIDE tournaments for a few years, worked on your chest, got better and once you felt really confident you could play in some FIDE tournaments and let's say you'd have a starting rating of 1900 or 1800 and from there but those 200 or 100 points is a lot more attainable than let's say 800 points because it really is tough to gain like 200 points in a tournament even if you're down at 1200 and I've got a friend who um, we played in Bulgaria together and he had a rating of 1180 or something and he was maybe 2,000, 2,100 strength. And at that point, it was just more of a meme. And it was kind of funny that he had such a low rating. And I remember, oh, it was so bad. Like, in the first round, he played, like, one of the highest seats. He was playing this girl. And uh, they ended up drawing. 
with my friend uh, is this guy called Nicholas and um, me, Nicholas and another friend called Holden we were just like playing cards in like the hotel lobby at, uh, at like I don't know 1am and we just see this girl get dr like dragged in by two of her friends she's completely smashed out of her mind um, drinking really heavily and they just like walk up the stairs and we realized that this girl was Nicholas's first round opponent and she must have been so distraught drawing to an 1100 that, I don't know, her rating was like 1900, 2000. Like, <laughs> she just like drunk herself to death. This was the first round of the tournament. And oh my God, like, that was one of the funniest moments ever. But <laughs> okay, moving on, moving on. I remember when I was um, growing up as a chess player, I really only had two goals. My first goal was to reach an ECF of 160, which I guess is the equivalent of like 1900, and get onto the England Junior squad. And really, like when I think back to like 160, I don't really, it's bad. Like, because I, I guess I've got better and I've now immersed myself more into the chess world and more of a professional scene. I don't feel like 160 is that strong at all. But I remember as a junior, like I really, really respected um, all of the players that had like a rating of 160 and above, and I just really wanted to be able to play chess like that. And I guess that's the kind of curse with chess. It's like the more you get into it, the more you want to get better, and the less you're satisfied. It's like at that point, once I reached 160 and got into the England Junior Squad, I was really content with chess. But that was when chess was still. A hobby to me and I guess now like because I've immersed myself so much into it like I'm just getting so fascinated by the whole game and like I just really want to get way way better than that so yeah okay maybe you're gonna exceed your goals and then at that point maybe it's a good time to think about FIDE tournaments and uh, international tournaments but until then yeah I'd stick to the local leagues and congresses. So uh, one last thing about the local leagues is uh, in, if you happen to live in London, there are uh, great opportunities, like especially the London League is something you definitely need to sign up to. There are, um, again, different divisions for that and teams have like different uh, um, teams that they enter. So they might have one team in Division 1, but maybe one team in Division 2, one team in Division 3. So if you're a weaker player, you should still be able to play with the team. And I played for a team called the Drunken Knights and um, that was uh, really good fun. The venue was in a pub so I'd always be drinking and playing and actually since I was a student and drinking a lot uh, I was kind of used to the drinking so when I was playing chess and drinking I was kind of like used to that feeling and I actually helped and I had a great amazing season but yeah I mean um, local leagues are great and I would definitely recommend it. Uh, regarding the clubs in London, unfortunately Drunken Nights has since closed. I mean all of the clubs have closed due to Covid but I think Drunken Nights closed the year before Covid because of like venue difficulties. But uh, there are a few other clubs I'd recommend like uh, for instance Hammersmith Club I went to once and they were really welcoming, really inclusive and they had uh, both juniors and adults at the club and it was really a nice vibe. Uh, I would also recommend uh, Hackney Chess Club, although I've never been, I've heard good things about it. And what I like about it is they don't just have one club session each week. They have like multiple like blitz meetups in like pubs and stuff, like a bit more social. So um, I, I thought that was really cool and an important aspect to the kind of community feel you want to get from um, a, a team that you're playing for. Yeah, I guess that's really it. I mean, like right now, obviously with COVID, there's not really too much um, real life chess going on. Apart from like bigger tournaments, uh, that's about it. Um, little spoiler, I'm actually going to Italy uh, in on January the 2nd to play in a tournament. And uh, the tournament I'm playing in is for players above uh, 2000 FIDE, so it's going to be hella tough and I'm so so pumped for it and uh, I'm doing all of this chest training to get myself in shape for it and yeah we'll, we'll honestly just see how it goes like I might end up scoring zero I might end up scoring 50% if I get 50% like I'll be absolutely over the moon because 
like I'd say the average rating in the tournament is like around 2300, 2350, so it's really tough. But yeah, like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that. And yeah, once COVID is all over, I'm sure there's going to be a big boom in uh, tournaments that like have been waiting and waiting and waiting to just like take place. I would say uh, one last thing is um, right now that is still some like competitive online chess taking place like actually the British Chess Championships is starting today uh, it's past midnight so it's technically the 18th so I would uh, definitely look into playing that if you're interested in some competitive chess I believe you can still enter the rapid and blitz sections for that and um, yeah I mean uh, there's lots and lots of chess um, you can get up to despite corona times like there's so many twitch channels to explore so many youtube channels to explore um so many chess lifestyle videos to watch so yeah um you should have your hands full chess wise and have a great christmas see you in the next video bye